Now, for anyone that actually knows me pretty well, apart from lure fishing, I love float fishing for bass. I don't think there's any more fun away than targeting bass around harbors, in runs, around beaches, than fishing a float with a live bait underneath it, something like a prawn or something like a sand smelt. So I thought I'd make a little video to show you the two techniques that I would use and why I would use them. And then later on in the video, we'll go and collect some bait and we'll put it to practice. Now, float fishing for me has been something that I've always done since I was a kid. And it's something that I've always done with my dad, whether it's just using a stick float like this or a fat float like that, fishing for garfish, fishing for mackerel, fishing for pollock, also float fishing a crab for something like a ras in the shallows of a breakwater. This technique is something that I've used constantly throughout my life and I feel it's probably one of the funnest way to catch a fish, visualizing a fish, taking your bait by watching this big colorful floaty bit of polystyrene sink beneath the water layers, hook into it and you've got yourself a fish. So the way that I usually actually fish for bass most of the time is using a grotto or a sand smelt. And the way I fish for them is usually around where I'm near a harbour wall, where the tide's flowing in, where usually the bass are usually sitting on the wall or sitting on a pressure edge in a, some jackweed, waiting for a fish and waiting to pounce. Now what you could do is you could free live a, you know, a grotto, but I like to visualise the take and that's why I use one of these floats. Now usually I would use something in the range of 15 to 30 gram. This is in the middle, 23. And what I would use is just a small little weight sitting underneath it, nothing special, and then a small hook underneath. The reason I go for a smaller float is you don't want something too bulky. You don't want something that's gonna be making a splash or disturbance. So something small and thin like that is absolutely perfect. Now, the way I rig it up, I use a conventional float stop at the top with a small bead. And then underneath it, obviously the float. And then I have a smaller weight Usually I'd recommend if you're using like a little piece of mackerel or squid or a sand eel for something like a snipe or a pollock, I'd recommend using 20 grams of weight. But when I'm live baiting, I don't want this actual float to be sitting fully upright. I kind of want it to be on its side or like this, like this or like that and not like that. So what I've done is I've gone for a 10 gram weight on a 20 gram float so it doesn't pull it all the way under. And also your bait that you're using is usually gonna be a little bit heavier. So I don't want the float to be right down deep in the water. I wanna be able to see all the bites visualizing as I was saying before. So underneath the weight, I've got a bead, then I have a swivel. And then for me, I don't want a really long snood. I've got a foot of snood and then I've got a small carp-like circle hook. And the trick to this is people think big bass, big hook, big bait. Nah, chuck that all out the window. That hook will find itself right in the corner of the bass mouth every time. I'm telling you, every time. It will take the bait and that will either be in the top lip or right in the corner. And it will come out so easy. Because when the bass is usually taking the bait, it's chasing it around, it grabs it and it swallows it. And when it grabs it, it literally just grabs this and this will be in the nose of the fish and it hooks itself right into the top. So that would be my first rig if I was fishing for bass around the harbour in a little bit of run, a float, a smaller weight than usual and a small circle hook. Always have a float stop so you can adjust the depth, but usually the places that I'm fishing, I'm only fishing for an hour. So I'm only adjusting it a small amount at a time, not like a couple of foot like you're fishing like a deep water mark. Now think about a different situation. Let's say I'm fishing on a beach, maybe on some rocks where the tide flows in. I'm gonna be using something a little bit different for bait. I'm gonna be using something like a prawn. Now prawns are very easy to get. You can go down to your local harbors, especially at night, take a net with really small holes and you can drag it up through the weed and up the rock walls and usually you'll get some prawns. Prawns are really easy to keep alive. You don't need an aerator like you would for a grotto. You can just put them in a bucket of water. Yes, you can have a bubbler, but yeah, you can keep them for a good couple of hours without changing the water. And the technique that I'm using for when I'm fishing with prawn is a little bit different, a little bit of a different float, and that is a bubble float. Now, this is something that you maybe see using for a mullet. You put a little bit of water in it, you can cast it nice and far. The reason I'm using this for a prawn is because I'm not chucking it far, I'm chucking it around the jackweed beds, right in close, close quarters. 
So I just want something that I can flick out, something that I can see, but also something that's not gonna make a complunk and kill that prawn. Now, you would usually tie your main end to here, to the other side where that little loop is. You can use a clip of any sort. That's really up to the angler themselves. But the way I tie on, on the business end with my snood is a loop knot, as you can see there. And that gives that a little bit of movement all the way around that knot, so it's not actually fixed to it. I then have a foot again of line and then straight away to a little circle hook. Nothing too big. Bigger the hook, more chance you're gonna kill the prawn and the prawn is not gonna flick around in the water as much. You don't wanna be killing it, it's called live bait for a reason. But the trick is, I want that prawn to sink down. Naturally, that prawn will actually go down through the layers, but I've just got a little split shot there like you would for mullet. And that's just to take it down into the layers a little bit quicker, maybe so a bird can't take it off, but just so it's down into those layers of the water and depth or the jackweed that you're fishing over or the structure and that prawn can sit there. And I'm only using a foot. Obviously, you can change that when you want. It's really up to you. But the, most of the places that I'm fishing is two, three foot of water and then the prawn sits just underneath. So that's it, the bubble float and then the little carp-like circle hook, little BB shot above it. And that's how I'd fish maybe a beach or some rocks, shallow ground with a live prawn. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you a little video of how I would collect the grottoes. I haven't really got one to how I would collect the prawns. Prawns, you just need a net. We are on the stinkiest pier ever, and that's to get some live bait. Now I've been searching an area which I fished for bass for for the last few weeks, and I've started to see some moving into the shallows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hope to get some grottoes tonight with my drop net feed some crab in like you have seen on other videos, try and get the grottoes to come in. And then hopefully if I can get some, I can fill my live bait tank up, which is ready to go already. And we can get out there and uh, go and fish. What I'm gonna do is, as usual, I've got some big dirty crabs out of the bins. They're ponking, but they're full of juice. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna feed that in really slowly bit by bit, you don't want to overpower it, otherwise the grottoes will just follow it to the bottom. Once I've got some, I'll show you what they look like, show you how to prep them, how to keep them. The important thing here is to keep the grottoes alive. So we have an aerator, a nice bucket of water, but you want to keep changing that water because I'm gonna to have to make a drive later to where I'm going. And I don't want the fish to be too scared or you know, knackered or with no air in the water. You want to keep changing that water all the way to the point where you want to go. So what I've done is I've just literally crushed up a whole crab into bits. And all I'm doing is I'm just flicking little bits into the water column. And as you can see, it's just breaking off. And hopefully that's gonna make a scent and hopefully the grottoes are gonna turn up. Like I do for mullet, a little bit at a time. You can see that gives off a really big cloud of food and meat. And the grottoes love that kind of stuff. Now, if your crabs are too old and dirty and really smelly, they're no good. You want them to kind of be fresh. Just keep flicking it in and you can just see that trail. If you put the whole thing in, it's just gonna to sink to the bottom and then you're not gonna be able to, you know, get them. And the grottoes are already turning up down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let them have a little feed. Then I'm gonna put that in. You don't wanna put that in too early because it'll spook them, but there's lots of them in here. So let's go. Now it always doesn't usually happen like that, but that's first chuck. And that is what I'm looking for lots of grottoes lots of them this could be a good night and then if i get any big ones i can swap these little ones out perfect absolutely perfect Good, good bait is key in this game. There we go. Come on. So my area is running there. I always cut a bit out the top as well, just so they can't flutter around. I can fill the bait bucket right up. 
let's go again. Now at the moment, the grottoes are really happy to come to the net. So you can probably see them down there in the light. And what I like to do is just suspend my net, feed them a little bit. There you go, you can see them all coming in now. Let them come over the net, let them be happy around the net and then bring it up. Lots of grottoes around again. That plume of crab juice has really brought them on the bite again. Got lots in that hit. Big ones as well. At least if we get big ones, we can keep the, put the small ones back. Proper size ones, that's what we want. Now, I don't know if you can see but there's so much white bait here as well, which is a really good sign. Probably come in on all the particles, but the grottoes are still around feeding. But the white bait is just... Everywhere. Well, good evening. The boys have joined me tonight for a little bit of a fishing session. So as you've probably just seen, I just got a load of live bait and we've come down to a little mark just before dark. I'm hoping it was going to be dark, but it's not. And what we're going to target is some basils on a float. Now I'm just fishing a normal float set up as you would for a mackerel and a snipe. I'm not using a big hook that you would usually for a bass. I'm just using a small circle hook, which is just for something like a carp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a live guado on the float, let it just swim around, and then hopefully we can get into some basils. Got the boys watching me as well, so no pressure. I'm pretty sure we're at game time now. Yeah, we're at game time. Tide's about to start running. So I'm going to hook one up and we're going to get in there. First fish of the night. This one nearly took me around the structure in the corner. Oh yeah, he's all right. Oh fuck, I'm gonna Come on, mate, chill. Lovely fish to start. What do you reckon? Three, four pounds? Three pound easy all day. Taken on a. Oh yeah, three and a half. Live grotto. Absolutely smashed me. He tried to take me around the gate. I put a a leader on top of my float so my braid's not on the wall at all so if I probably had braid on there straight to my float I'd have probably lost him but lovely fish to start yeah boy cheers Chan lovely oh, I was gonna say